to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Well, today we are continuing on with our series talking about insurance. We are in week three of our four-week series. If you missed weeks one or two, week one we talked about homeowners insurance, some key coverages and optional coverages. And at week two, we talked about optional policies. So you might want to review those two episodes if you missed them. Today, welcome back, Sana Bag. How are you, Sana? Good, good. <laughs> good. Happy we, to be back. <laughs> so happy to have you. Sana is an insurance broker with Goosehead Insurance. It's a nationwide insurance company, so she can work um, throughout all states and uh, help you with your insurance needs. But she is here to share her wealth of information. And this week, we are going to be talking investment properties. Yeah. So you're going to talk to us a little bit about what the difference is between insurance for an investment property versus your own home, because there's there's a difference. It's not yeah. You don't get the same type of coverage if you purchase, because you might p- purchase something that you decide you want to rent out, right? If you, you know, not not are not necessarily an investor, but you decide, hey, I'm, I, I want to branch out. I want to, I want to give this a try. So you yeah. need to understand what you need to have as far as insurance coverage. So correct. Yep. Okay. So what is so? How do they differ? What's different with investment properties versus our homeowners coverage? So they're actually two different policies. So um, investment properties are normally put on what's called a dwelling policy. Okay. Um, And essentially the difference is, you know, the core coverages are the same as far as the replacement cost of the home itself. Okay. So similar, you know, ways of coming up with that. And then some of the differences are that, for example, personal property, right? As a landlord, you're not going to have a lot of personal property. <laughs> right, your, right, right. It's not your, your uh, personal property. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the only uh, personal property you may have are just the appliances. If okay. You provide them to your renters. Okay. Um, and so that is an optional coverage that you can have up to whatever limit you decide, essentially, depending on the company that sure. you're working with. Um, so that kind of saves you a little bit, you know, as far as premium goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also uh, there's fair rental value. Um, coverage. And that is essentially, so if there is a claim going on with the home, an insurance claim, and the renter cannot live in the home itself, okay, then, you know, the insurance company can potentially pay you the rent that you're missing out on. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So those are sometimes optional depending on the company. Okay. Um, Some will just tag that on and give it to you um, as part of you know, the dwelling policy, right. but some will, you know, provide that as an option and it's up to you. Okay. So that's good to know because especially if you are going to be a new investor and, um, you know, you want to get into this and you think, oh, but what happens if, right? Like right. if you're, you might be taking out a loan or something, you know, that you're anticipating your renter is going to cover, you know, the mortgage and those, those payments that, Okay, well, if they're not in there because of yeah. an issue, so that's good to know. Yep. So yeah, so that's how they differ. Um, one thing I will mention is, for example, if you are living in a duplex, so two units attached, right? Um, as a owner, so let's say you're living in one uh, one side and the other one you're renting out. Okay. You actually don't need an investment um, policy. You okay. actually need a homeowner's policy. Okay. So you just make sure with the insurance company that you're with that they are aware of that, but essentially it's not going to be an investment property. It would actually, or an investment policy. Poli- it would be-, be just a homeowner's policy, okay. essentially. So, so that's a, good to know. So it will tip. just cover the whole, the whole structure yes. as opposed to having to have two separate policies. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Great, great tip there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any that's, that's any other tips? Don't. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought about that because, yeah. uh, you know, We've come across that before where, you know, people purchase a home and they're like, hey, I'm going to, you know, rent out one side. And how does that even work? So, right. That, yep. OK, You're, good to know. So yeah. that's that's something to keep in mind. Right. If you want to uh, purchase a duplex and move into one side of it, you can save a little on the yeah. insurance by not needing two separate policies. Exactly. Yep. So, OK, good to know. You know, oh, one of the things that I did want to mention, because you, you mentioned, you know, as a landlord, right, you're going to cover the dwelling, right, the structure, um, you know, but the 
personal policy that you would get would be for maybe the appliances. But something that we should probably note is that if you are the renter, you want to make sure that you have a personal property policy. policy. Yes. Because if something were to happen to that structure, right, if there was a fire or a tornado or something, if you don't have that coverage, you just you just don't get those things replaced, right? Your, your right. landlord is not responsible for your personal property within the structure, the dwelling. Right, exactly. Yeah. And people don't realize that. Yeah. Um, some of the investors that I work with normally require their tenants to actually have that policy. Yeah. Now, they won't put in li- limits of what the personal property will be. That's up to you sure. as the renter. Um, but yeah, you do have to have your own policy as a renter in order to have your, you know, assets protected inside your home. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. So that was a good note. So, okay. So we talked about the difference between the homeowner's policy and the investment. Now, and you gave us a little tip. Do you have any other tips for our investors or landlords? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So a um, couple other things are, you know, if you are an investor, you want to make sure you're protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you should put your properties in an LLC. Now, this is going into the legal realm and, you know, uh, people should reach out to their attorneys. Yeah, and and we have great (laughs) referrals if you need if you need an attorney to talk in more detail. But this is just a very high level. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And so essentially having the homes in an LLC, then, you know, steps you away from that liability perspective. Um, Also, from an insurance perspective, you know, when the home is now deeded to an LLC, you can put the insurance policy in an LLC and step away from that as well. Okay. So I always recommend, you know, taking that step. Um, Sometimes when you do have a personal loan on an investment property, you may not be able to do that. Um, But at the same time, you know, this is something that a lot of the investors that I work with I yeah. definitely recommend to. Okay, that's a good tip. And an LLC is a limited limited liability corporation and it in essentially is an entity or an it, right? It's not yeah. a person. It's not yep, a he exactly. or a she. So it's a company or an it. So you're putting the um the property but then the policy into that company so that it yep. separates from you as a person. Exactly. So, yep. Yeah. So and if you think about it for a claim, right? So let's mm-hmm. say there's a claim made on your rental property and if it the rental property is in your name, it's going to travel with you to any other property that you own. So right. even your own home, it will impact your rates because they're going to pull up that claim and it's going to say your name. Yeah. And they're going to match it up and your rates are going to go up for your homeowner. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. a that is that's great information. Well, okay, so it travels with you as a person. But claims on the home also stay with the home, right, as well. Because I know I've had that with home buyers when they go to uh, purchase a property and, you know, their insurance rep will say, oh, well, this this one just had a roof replaced <laughs> through, the, <laughs> through the previous person's insurance. Um, you know, so that information stays correct with the home as well. So um, a lot of companies will... Uh, waive that as far as an impact on the new home buyer. Mm -hmm. Um, Some claims, for example, water claims, um, the depending on the company, not all companies do this, but they may impact your rate as a new home buyer. So it, so it might not impact your rate, but it still is, it's always noted, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. It's it's there. Information is out there. It's like social media. Yeah, that is true. Right. Yeah. This episode will be out there forever. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, so, all right. So that's, I know we went a little off topic there, but, yep. but still we're talking all things insurance. This, yes. This, yes. We're covering it this all. Month. So, yeah. <laughs> so anything else with investment properties that we should know about the coverage or any other tips that you have? Yeah. So another tip is um, when investors have multiple properties. So okay. a lot of investors, you know, they'll get into like 10, 20 properties. And then at that point, it's not manageable for them, right. you know, and Obviously, sometimes people use property management companies, but even then they're liable to pay the insurance bills and all of that. Um, So I recommend, you know, going with an insurance or talk to your insurance um, broker or agent um, and see if they can put you with a company that will do multiple policies scheduled on like a master policy. So you have one policy number, but you could have as 
you know, like 10, 15 units on there. Okay. Um, and and they don't all have to be connected units, <laughs> no, right? No, it could right. be so 15 have... homes. So yeah. um, we recently did that for one of my clients where, you know, he had 15 properties and he was just sick of like having all these. <laughs> Can different- you imagine? I can't even imagine. What's your policy number? Uh, let me see. Let me flip through my Rolodex yep. of numbers and, and pick one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. it's you know, it's a lot. And also yeah. the billings, right? They were right. scheduled at like random months because he purchased them all throughout, you know, yes. different years. Right. And so we got it all combined. It's on okay. one policy. All oh. of the homes are scheduled. And so you just pay one premium. That sounds so nice. I, I like that because you get yep. one statement. You can see everything. It's yeah. all detailed there. Yep. You know when the bill is due. It's the yeah. same for it them all. It might be sticker shock. <laughs> they're all <laughs> that together. Is, that is true. But. <laughs> well, you got to step back. But and then you. <laughs> how many units. <laughs> take your deep breaths and yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, okay. That is. Yeah, that's great. That's good to know that yeah. that's because. I'm sure there's some people if as they're getting into investing or considering that may not have even thought about that. Yeah, you can have like right. 20 different yes, <laughs> yes. due dates and numbers. and <laughs> Exactly. Yep. That's great. Well, anything else? Did we did we cover everything then? Investment properties that we yeah, want to cover? Yeah, okay. quick 101 on investment properties. Yes. Yeah. And again, this is we are covering high level here. Yeah. We just want to make sure that we're giving you some some information and it sparks, right? So if this is something that you're like, oh, I, this this is for me. I need to know a little bit more in detail about this. Then you can reach out to your insurance rep. You can reach out to Sana. She's always welcome to answer your questions. Um, but we just want to give you some good key points and information and then, you know, see if it's something you need to investigate further. So, yep, yep. exactly. So, all right. Well, thank you again for joining us. Sana. Thank I you. appreciate it. And uh, next week we are going to be wrapping up our series, but we're going to be covering. There have been some changes within the last few years to auto insurance and the um, the medical piece that goes along with the auto insurance, whether you realize that was part of your auto insurance or not. So <laughs> if you are not aware or you're curious as to what this change was, hopefully you are aware. But if not, that's what we're here for. So tune in next week for that and of course if you missed the first two episodes we have we covered homeowners insurance and then we covered some optional policies so you can go back and check out those episodes so thank you for joining us thank you thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next time on to with tracy